by Tom Perez, Director of the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. And the $64,000 question mm -hmm. all day long has been, tell us what the Intergovernmental mm -hmm. Affairs Department does. We make sure that the Biden agenda can get implemented. And the way you make sure that infrastructure works, mm -hmm. that the money flowing to schools, to cities, to counties, directly to people get works is by working with mayors, working with county officials, working with community leaders. And that's what we do at the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. We just had all the governors in town last week. Gotcha. The week before, we had all the mayors in town. Uh, success is a joint venture between the Biden-Harris administration, our state partners, our local partners, our community partners, our media partners to make sure that people understand what we're trying to do for them and what understand what investing in America means. It means your $35 cap on diabetes comes to you from the Biden-Harris administration. It means that those investments in apprenticeships so folks can get jobs comes to you from this investment or that investment. So that's what we do in a governmental. We're connective tissue, making sure that government works for everyone. So in research, there's something called translational research. And mm -hmm. the job of a translational researcher is to take this stuff that happens up here and to make it applied in places. Mm -hmm. Is that similar to your function? Oh, very much so. I mean, we the, the challenge that we have is we have an alphabet soup of investments. Uh, investing in America is a, is a very good umbrella term. But if I sit here talking about the infrastructure bill or the Inflation Reduction Act. You know what the Inflation Reduction Act is really about? This is about equity. Mm -hmm. It's about making sure that we lower the cost of prescription drugs. So right now, the first president who's been able to successfully take on the pharmaceutical industry to lower costs has been Joe Biden. Okay. So translating down words that, you know, in the abstract don't mean much, uh, or you know, they're hard to decipher, that's what one of the things the Inflation Reduction Act does. It, it's also a major investment in making sure that we are taking our responsibilities to create clean communities um, very seriously. And that's the biggest investment in climate change. It's the biggest and one of the biggest investments in equity. You know, you, you look at where um, toxic waste dumps get located. Yeah. You look at where you know, in the name of redevelopment a generation ago, you put that interstate highway right through the black community. I grew up in Buffalo, New York. They built the Kensington Expressway to connect, make it easier for the white folks in the suburbs to get downtown. They went right through East Buffalo. And now what Joe Biden is doing through an initiative called Reconnecting Communities is making sure that communities in Philly or in Buffalo, where I grew up, that were, were uh, black and brown folks were literally cut out of opportunity, are, are reconnected. And that's what we're trying to do is build an America that works for everyone. So let me ask you, if I'm, if I'm a Philadelphian sure. or a Pennsylvanian and I want to, you seem like the connector. You seem like the person I would have to go to in order to get stuff in my local or state municipality done that comes from the federal government how do i access you and i'm wondering for you does philly do a good job of that i contend that there are a lot of opportunities that we don't get in our city because our connectors are not connecting well well i'll tell you if you got a president in joe biden i don't i haven't looked at the numbers recently but if i had to look at the city he's been to most frequently if Philly isn't number one, it's in the top three. So how come we still poor <laughs> so, and hungry? And I, I, well, we still have more work to do because, you know, the mistakes and inaction of 60 years doesn't get cured in three. Okay. And I remember vividly when I had the privilege of being your labor secretary during President Obama, uh, one of the things we did in Philadelphia was to connect young people, young black and brown people in particular, to really good jobs. Uh, I worked with then Mayor Nutter right. on uh, programs to introduce 18 year olds to careers in computer coding. Okay. Because one thing I know, because I got three young, you know, three kids, 
this smartphone is their life. And whenever I got a problem with this, I don't try to fix it. I just give it to my kids and they fix it. Exactly. And so you take that fluency with gaming, you take the fluency with gadgets, and you translate that into a middle-class job. Because, you know, there are 500,000 openings for computer coders, and you don't need a college degree. Mm -hmm. And that's a pathway. So those are examples of things that we um, have done both back in the Obama years and now in the Biden era to make sure that opportunity exists in every corner of America, including right in the heart of Philly. And I'm understanding that. Here's my challenge, and maybe you can help me understand it better. Because um, I, Philadelphia is always touted as significant to democratic progress at a local, state, and mm -hmm. national level. You're right. You know, the Bidens and many others come to Philadelphia often to curry the mm -hmm. vote of Philadelphians, particularly Black Philadelphians. If we, if Black Philadelphians don't show up in this next election the Democrats won't carry the state of Pennsylvania. You, you know, you have mm -hmm. Pittsburgh associations as well. You, we know how yeah. important that is. And I'm struggling with, with all of that. How come Philadelphia is still racked with poverty, hunger, poor schooling, and it seems disconnected from the opportunities that you're mm -hmm. so excited about? I'm trying to understand that lack of translation mm -hmm. And I think you can help me. Sure. Understand. Well, here, I think it's important to understand where we were mm -hmm. in 2021 when Joe Biden took over, where we are now and where we need to go. I mean, the unemployment rate uh, in Pennsylvania when Joe Biden, the, the unemployment rate, let's, let's be real specific, for the black community when Joe Biden took over was 9.3%. It's now 5.3%. Uh, the overall unemployment rate in Pennsylvania uh, is 3.5%. Uh, you look at black wealth uh, in the aggregate, and including in Pennsylvania, it's way up. Mm -hmm. Black employment is way up. Um, small business ownership in the black community is way up. Uh, costs for internet are coming down. Black enrollment in the Affordable Care Act right. is at a record level. Um, the president has brought down costs for things like insulin, and insulin, you know, diabetes, you know, uh, disproportionately impacts black and brown communities. So when you're paying 35 bucks a month instead of 400 bucks a month, that's real money. All of those things are happening. Uh, so where we were and where we are, we are, we, we have come quite a distance. Are we where we need to be? Heck no. And we know that. And one of the most important things that the president did and said and has and is it still delivering on is and this was an executive action he took literally i think day one or day two and that was an executive action on equity he knew at the beginning of this recession you know as we were climbing out of this pandemic induced recession he knew that we were going to make unprecedented investments in infrastructure unprecedented investments in uh, child care and health care. And, uh, and we did that. Um, but he also knew that we didn't want to do it the same old way, right. which is why we had this focus on equity. And there's a, a concept that we have that, uh, called Justice 40 communities. These are communities that have been disproportionately impacted. And if you've spoken to folks uh, from the administration, from the Environmental Protection Agency, yep. other agencies. Um, very, very real focus. And, and Philly falls yep. under that category. And so um, I am simultaneously proud of what we've been able to do to bring more jobs and opportunity to folks. And, uh, you know, the president uh, has been working very closely now with Mayor Parker to identify, you know, what are some other opportunities? Like you look at, you know, the penitentiary that's been shut down for generations and you know most americans know about the horrific you know tuskegee experiments right. but fewer the holmesburg or eastern state well um, uh, the one that's in the city yeah the one that's in the city okay yeah and you know fewer people knew about some of the experiments right. on black people that were taking mm -hmm. place right in the city the president knows about that and he's working with the mayor you know, to reimagine, mm -hmm. you know, redevelopment. 
you know, working on, on public safety as well. We know the murder rate, you know, shot up in uh, 2020, 2021. And you look at it, you know, 562 Philadelphians were murdered in uh, 2021. The number in 2023 was 410. Uh, this year, it's come down, or at least the current rate is about 20% lower than last year, which was 20% lower than the year before. One person murdered is one person too many. Yes. Let me be let me be very firm about that. Very cool. Again, though, the trend data uh, is moving in the right direction, yes. and we're going to continue to invest the resources that are necessary so folks um, feel safe. Let's invert the funnel for sure. a minute. I, I get what you're saying from the White House's perspective. I would want your advice to local leaders and state leaders of how better to access what you say you all are offering. Because sure. there, to me, seems to be somewhat. So if I'm a lo yeah. local leader, state leader, how do I access what comes through your office? That's a great question. And there's. And it's not just my office. It's it, right. how do let's let's really, uh, how do you access something at the labor department or health and human services? Well, first of all, um, uh, as your former labor secretary, I said <laughs> yeah, when you have a good job mm -hmm. and you have um, access to health care, those and you have access to um, safe, affordable housing, those foundational pieces can help right. lift up right. you know families and communities, and so. You know, on the job front, you know, the, the biggest challenge that employers have uh, right now is worker shortage. Right. And so um, I often refer to the Department of Labor and our administration as like Match.com. Yes, we will be talking to them. Okay. Sure. And, uh, you know, we match uh, job seekers that mm -hmm. want to punch their ticket to the middle class with employers who have needs. Right. And, you know, we've worked very closely. I've been to the Finishing Trades Institute okay. right in the heart of Philly. Mm -hmm. And that is a spectacular set of opportunities yes. for folks. And, you know, let's be honest about the, the, the evolution of the labor movement. Um, you know, you, you now, the reason why, one of the many reasons why um, Joe Biden loves the labor movement is that um, it is a real pathway to opportunity for black and brown people. But Philly has historically left, we call it leaving money on the table regarding mm -hmm opportunities for federal grants or state grants or whatever the case may be that we don't go after, maybe because we don't know about them, maybe because we have poor grant writers. I don't know. Yeah. But we're well known for leaving millions, if not billions of dollars on the table because we have not accessed. Well, and we've been working really closely with Mayor Parker from day one. That's what I want to do. How, how, do, how do we yeah, do well, Mayor Parker sure knows how to do it because she's been, uh, she's got <laughs> us on speed dial. And right. you know what? That's exactly what we want. You know, there's a, this, this law, the Inflation Reduction Act, let me just give a couple real concrete examples. If you, you know, say you've got a, a condo or a house, a row house, whatever it is you, you have in um, Philly and you want to um, uh, get a new stove mm -hmm. and you want it to be energy efficient or a new washer dryer, uh, something like that. The Inflation Reduction Act, if you get energy efficient appliances, you can get money off of that. Right. You can get a discount. And so, you know, these are examples of uh, very concrete things you can do. Yes. If you have a neighborhood elementary school and you want to put solar panels on it, the Inflation Reduction Act can give you subsidies to do that. If, if you are the pastor at a church or the imam uh, at a temple and you want your facility um, to be um, a clean energy facility, you can get money from the federal government. You don't have to go through the city. You and I didn't go to the state. I had to come all the way to Washington yeah. D.C. to talk to you to know that I could do that back in Philly. Yeah, if, if you own your building, <laughs> and you will own your building if someday, if not now. I'm watching our president and CEO take notes because she yeah. didn't even know. Well, that's, the, that's the thing. No, and so, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, you mentioned, that, you know, part of this is on us, okay? We need to make sure that Philly and other communities understand there, there's an unbelievable array of opportunity out there right now people on internet mm -hmm. you know we have a thing called the american um uh, connectivity program and what that is is uh, if you meet the income requirements if you're a family of four making fifty thousand dollars 
you can get a $30, $40 subsidy on your internet bill every right. month. And so, you know, Joe Biden is trying to cut costs for folks, trying to make sure communities are safe, communities are clean, communities are thriving. And there is an unlimited number, seemingly unlimited number of, of opportunities. And my job is to make sure that uh, folks are aware of them and to work not only with our local elected officials, but that's why we do conversations like you, because you're an opinion leader. Like, folks, listen to you, man. Well, we've been waiting all day to find out what Intergovernmental Affairs does, and now we're very clear, and I'm sure people from Philly, people from Pennsylvania, people from across the nation will be reaching out to you directly, Tony uh, Perez. Hey, I'll give you my email, okay? Of the Office <laughs> of Intergovernmental Affairs. Do that, by the way. Before Thomas. Dot e. Dot Perez at W H O. Dot EOP dot gov. That's again Thomas dot E dot Perez at WHO dot EOP dot gov. I want to hear from you and we want to help you. Thank you, Mr. Perez, for joining us. It's an us honor today. to be with you. Thank you.